have a rich history, they also have a rich prehistory, the Native American history and prehistory. And I happened across an interesting letter about the uh, Eaton County, Michigan Indians at, during contact period. Now, this original document used here was presented by Edward A. Foote um, on July 5th, 1876 at the Centennial Celebration at Charlotte, Michigan. A rare glimpse back at a culture the Europeans brought into. It's always interesting for me to see what the culture was like when the two when the two cultures were living together. And so this gives some really great insights. Let me quote from uh, Mr. Foote. I, uh, not, I'm not doing the entire document, but I'm, I'm hitting the highlights, okay? The original document uh, Mr. Foote wrote, the whites who settled here previous to 1840 found the county inhabited uh, by Potawatomi and Chippewa, or properly Ojibwa Indians, or tribes. There were two Potawatomi villages about 10 miles south of us on, on uh, territory which is now in the township of Walton. The oak opening land in the south part of the county seemed better adapted to the Indian mode of life than the dark and heavily timbered Northland. Signs of Indian cornfields, rows of, of corn grown over, the, over with turf, could be seen yet at an early day uh, upon the prairie where Charlotte now stands. Their wigwams were usually built of elm bark and flag mats, and during the sugar making season, which was extremely important to them, they would make uh, they would move into a heavy into the heavy timber and camp among the great sugar maples. After this, they would come and they would come out and remain in the oak openings in the south part of the county, uh, cultivating their corn and pumpkins and gathering berries. In Walton, they had 100 acres and scattered patches under cultivation at, at one time. To protect their corn patches, they hoppled their ponies with bark and surrounded the patch with a fence of bark string tied to trees and to stakes. Indian trails well beaten and apparently quite old traversed the county <clears throat> nearly in the same direction as, the, as our two railroads that are now in operation. And the proposed route of the Marshall and Coldwater Road on trail from the southeast or southwest, excuse me, Bellevue, ran through Walton, crossing the Battle Creek, about 40 rods east of the bridge and south of the city, and crossing this uh, fair ground in a northeasterly direction. East of our own prairie, this trail crossed another large pony trail coming from Duck Lake and Huckleberry Swamp south of us. The Indians at this time were civil, submissive, and kind to the settlers. They nearly always looked at the, uh, at the window before uh, going to a door of a cabin. Without uh, the warning snap of a trick, they would appear unexpectedly close beside you in the woods. Uh, they would never help themselves to pumpkins or potatoes without permission, and they would never steal anything from their friends. They had a way of locking up their wigwams. Now, this is really interesting. When leaving them, which the settlers adopted for them, excuse me, they had a way of locking up their wigwams. When they were leaving them, which the settlers adopted for the protection of their own shanties. It is kind of the average system. This lock was simply two sticks uh, leaning against the doorway so that they formed an X. An Indian would never, ever uh, enter a doorway when he saw this cross placed across it. Now, Benjamin Shumway of Walton had borrowed some steel traps of one of the Indians and was ready to return them. Now, the Indian went for them. It was quite a distance, uh, only to find that Mr. Shumway's house, uh, but that the family was not there, and the door was locked with the crossed sticks, and Honor would not let him cross that. He had looked in at the windows and he saw his traps, but the cross forbade his entry to take even what he owned. And he went one mile from there, uh, one mile from there, and found a Captain Hickok, and told him of his problem. The captain went with him uh, to the house and retrieved the traps, but even then the Indian could not be induced to enter the home that had the that had the X across it. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. Isaac C. Hickok, the first white male child born in the county, 
while yet young enough to wear uh, frack and aprons, received instructions in the art of shooting bow and arrow from an Indian whose hair was as white as snow and who was very fond of visiting around the Hickok uh, house in Walton near the Indian villages at the time. So they lived in pretty close approximation. This old Indian made for little Isaac a perfectly formed bow and some arrows and would spend hours teaching him how to shoot. Little Isaac would show his appreciation by going into the house and step down the cellar and taking a few potatoes in his apron and would go to the Indian and say, Nitospini X, meaning I give you potatoes. The old Indian taking the potatoes would place his hand on Isaac's head and sing impressively, Nichem, Chimoko Ma, Papoose, which means a good white man's papoose. The Indian ponies nearly all wore small bells so that their whereabouts while wandering in the bushes could be traced. They weren't uh, put in corrals and stuff by the Indians. They roamed free evidently. A drove of them would come in the night <clears throat> under a, a back window of Captain Hickok's house where dishwater had been thrown out and so all they could hear at night was the tinkle 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 of the bells on the horses outside their windows. <laughs> so notwithstanding the yelling and throwing of, of boots at them it continued and Captain Hickok was heard saying confound them I would find in the morning that they would take pretty near a wagon load of dirt to fill the hole that they had gnawed into the ground to get the salt that was in the dish that was in the dishwater when it was thrown out. I will end quote there. These are just a few little incidents of, of uh, life during that during that contact uh, period, the early settling of Michigan when it was still Michigan territory and was indeed the western frontier. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, there, uh, I have so much more to share with you in the coming days and weeks, and uh, look forward to getting back together with you again. And I. Uh, I'm gonna show you something just a second. I hadn't planned on this, but I'm gonna show you something. Give me This is CJ. Now, when when Charlie Cat died, he had been a very prolific old man for not feeling good. He fathered two litters of kittens. Now, one litter was born about six or seven months before Charlie passed, and my neighbor has two of them, and uh, I'll show you them another time. This, then, these ones were born about two weeks after Charlie Cat passed away. And there were, there were seven, and we're keeping two that are black, and that look like Charlie Cat, and they have his disposition. And uh, this one is uh, CJ, Charlie Jr. And the other one who looks identical is Lil Elf. Oh, here's Lil Elf. Come here, Lil Elf. Say hi to everybody on YouTube. These are Charlie's babies, and I couldn't be happier having them here with David and I. All right, God bless you all. Uh, thank you for watching. I look forward to getting back together with you real soon, God willing. And I love all of you on the other side of that monitor. God bless always.